With my presentation, I want to uh, show an example of how differences between monitoring networks may lead to a lot of commotion. As we have in the Netherlands quite some monitoring networks, also in the same region, it's something that might happen elsewhere as well. And I will um, to use this example also how we deal with this kind of commotion in the Netherlands. Oh, wait. Yes, okay. In April 2014, we were confronted with uh, headlines in the farmer's press with headings like the nitrate results of RIVM, our institute, too high. And it not, uh, was only the farmer's press because a few days after these articles were published in the farmer's press, we were confronted with members of parliament asking questions to our minister, which were not very subtle, like what is your opinion on the shortcomings of the methods used by RIVM? So there was some shock at, the, uh, at our institute. Uh, but let's see what, is go what was going on. Uh, we have, there are three early warning monitoring systems in the Lus region of the Netherlands. The oldest one is the one carried out by the province of Limburg, and the nitrate trend is given with this uh, red line. The other two networks, the national network with the blue line, and the network carried out by the water company given with the green line, uh, started uh, a couple of years later. And as you can see, there are clear differences in the level of the nitrate concentration between these networks. And this was the reason why the water company carried out a small experiment. They took some samples from a field and they treated these samples with the methods used by our national network, LMM, and they treated it with their own protocol, uh, that's the D DSG. And as you can see, there's a clear difference in nitrate concentrations, Concentra con concentrations being higher when our uh, method was used. So this was the reason, as soon as these results were published, this was the reason for this commotion and the questions. Let's see, oh, this one. So let's first things, let's put first things into perspective. Although we are the second largest exporter of agricultural products in the world, the size of our country is only one-tenth of that of California. And now we are going to look to an area which is even small for the Netherlands here in the southern part, the Lus region. Now, in this Lus region, uh, there are three operational early warning networks. We have the national network, which covers the entire region. We have a network by the province, which is limited to the higher areas in this Lodz region, the so-called plateaus, and we have a network of the water company which is limited to the uh, groundwater protection zones. So the question is why differences in monitoring results in such a small area cause such a lot of fuss in the farmer's press and in our parliament. As you all might know that farm income depends on nitrogen use and this relationship uh, differs between soil type, crop types, uh, market conditions. But what is uh, the main thing is that the nitrogen use in the Netherlands is regulated by nitrogen application standards. So a standard is the maximum amount of nitrogen that a farmer may apply on his field. 
and the standards differ between crop types and soil types, and the reason for the differences between soil types is that these soil types differ in vulnerability to nitrate leaching, and as loess soils are considered as most vulnerable, the application standards are the lowest for these loess soils. So the relation between the results of the monitoring networks is that the nitrogen application standard are based on the results of the national network. So uh, the application limits are derived uh, with using a relationship between the nitrogen leaching and the nitrogen surplus, as shown in, in the, the picture. And this, this relationship is derived with data from the national network. In addition, we have environmental outlooks, which are based on a model called STONE, and this model is calibrated with data from the national network. To make it even worse, both the LMM data and the STONE results are reported to the European Commission. So in case that the LMM data overestimate leaching, the application standards may be too strict and outlooks may be too pessimistic. So I hope that you understand why we have some commotion. So the million dollar question is, which is the best protocol or method to be used to determine the nitrate concentration in root zone leaching in order to determine these nitrate application, nitrogen application standards? So let's first talk about a little bit about the process, how we tackled this policy problem. Uh, as, pers as people responsible for the three different networks, we started to call each other, try to define the problem, and talked about possible actions. What we did was we installed a working group, which involved, of course, the people which are uh, which were working for the di different uh, networks, but we also invited some independent scientists to give their opinion. Now, we had several meetings, and in these meetings, we of course compared the setup of the different networks. We looked for weaknesses in these setup. We discussed results of previous experiment. We defined new experiments to be carried out and we carried them out. We just discussed again these ex the results of these experiment and we discussed the results of a literature review we carried out. In the meantime, we stayed also in contact with the advisory board of the national network where also uh, farmers groups and uh, Environmental groups are represented, and we stayed in contact with the Ministry of Economic Affairs, which is also the Ministry of Agriculture, and we used their feedback in the discussions we had in this uh, working group. So, so far the proce process. Let's now look at the main items we looked into with the working group. As I said, we did first a comparison of the setup of the monitoring network and we looked for weaknesses and this in order to see what could be possible explanations for the differences in results of these networks. And we came up with two factors that we thought were most relevant. First, the area covered by the networks and secondly, the poor water extraction method. Now, I will show you how these uh, networks differ, and I will show you the effects of area and poor water extraction methods. So first, the national network. As I said, it covers the entire region. We have 50 commercial farms in this network, and at each farm, each year, 16 boreholes are made, and we sample uh, the soil column between 150 and 300 centimeters, so five to 10 feet depth. In this region, groundwater is very deep, 10, 20, 60 meters, so this is the only part of the Netherlands where we don't have groundwater at one meter. 
uh, <coughs> and we extract soil moisture with drainage centrifugation. So the provincial network, which is limited to the higher areas, the so-called plateau, uh, they sample each field uh, each year, 170 fields. They make uh, drill five boreholes per field, and they take a 10 centimeter length uh, soil sample at, in each uh, borehole at about uh, one, one meter 30. Uh, the extraction in this case is by batch extraction with water. And last not, but not least, the network of the water, water company, which is limited to uh, groundwater protection zones. It consists of 65 fields. At each field, two boreholes are drilled. And in each borehole, they sample two uh, different depths. Uh, 20 centimeter length uh, uh, soil samples at 150 and 2 meter 50. They have also batch extraction, but not with water, but with a calcium chloride uh, solution. So you see there are a lot of differences between these uh, networks, and we considered uh, area and the uh, differences in extraction method. So let's see the results of the uh, comparison in area. The area we uh, looked at is uh, we differed between dairy farms and arable farms and we looked at the results of the uh, provincial network in red and for the national network we differed between farms outside the plateaus and inside the plateaus. So all the points of the provincial network are inside the plateaus. So we see that for dairy farms, there are, there are differences, but they're not systematic. However, for arable farms, we see that farms outside the plateau area have a much higher concentration than farms inside the plateau area. So the differences between the provincial network and the national network could be explained by a difference in area that is covered. However, we also found differences in poor water extraction methods. What we see is that the nitrate concentration in uh, water extracted by centrifugation is higher than the concentration in a batch uh, extraction with water. And we did again uh, a similar experiment, now comparing centrifugation with better batch extraction with uh, calcium chloride, and we came up with the same results. So also there you see a difference, and we concluded that nitrate in mobile water extracted with the drainage centrifugation uh, is uh, higher, <laughs> sorry, is higher than nitrate in the average pore water, uh, in, the, uh, yeah, in the average pore water. So to wrap up, we have a difference in results between commonly used soil moisture sampling protocols, and this led to a lively debate in the agrarian, scientific, and political arena in the Netherlands. The stakes are high as changing the nitrogen application standards may affect both the agrarian income as well as the nitrogen leaching. With respect to the process, all relevant participants were involved from the start of the discussion and with respect to the outcome, we see that both the differences in area and in the extraction uh, method cause differences in nitrate level. What we didn't do was answer the million dollar question, and perhaps it was also because it was too sensitive. So we led that to the ministry, and they asked uh, advice from the scientific committee of the Manure Act, which is an independent uh, committee, and they will probably give advice this summer or just after this summer and publish the report on the internet, and they have to answer this million dollar question. 
Uh, the government will use this advice when drawing up the next NITRO Directive Action Program, and this action program or the draft of it will be discussed in Parliament in view of the revision of the Menu Act, as well as with the European Commission on review in, uh, in view of the next derogation request. And the derogation is an exemption from the maximum animal manure application uh, limit. So this, I thank you for, for your attention. Thanks. Questions? you have an opinion on maybe what's the more appropriate uh, <laughs> Just turn off this. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I've also been in the scientific committee and was also someone, a scientist, who was involved in the other program. So, yes, um, we went into more detail and we did some additional uh, research and we think we, we looked at two things. It could be either denitrification, which is occurring in the, in, in, the, in the smaller pores, so that then you have in the smaller pores, which are also extracted by the batch extraction, lower concentrations than in the larger pore, which are extracted by drainage certification, or it might be anion exclusion. And because we couldn't find any evidence that there would occur in these conditions, uh, dinitrification, and also chloride uh, showed a similar trend as nitrate, we, uh, we really think it's anion exclusion which causes these differences. And if that is the case, you better use this uh, drainage centrifugation because that is the water which, which is uh, going down to your aquifer or in some cases in, uh, in Limburg to springs which, uh, 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 yeah, which feed the uh, streams. So, Just a clarification for me to understand, Nico. When you're comparing those three networks uh, over the years, were they sampling at the exact same location or they were at different location and there is some spatial variation factor playing a little bit in that? Uh, no, they So in the little experiment that was carried out, they were sampling at the same location. In the, uh, the, the experiments we did with uh, comparing uh, the drainage centrifugation with batch experiment that were uh, replicate samples, so we were sure that should be the same. But the network differences uh, that that are different uh, lo locations. There's one thing which I should add, but I had no time or I thought it would be too confusing. One of the reasons why the concentration in the uh, water supply area is lower is also because there the drinking water company works together with the extension servers and the farmers to decrease the nitrogen load and they we have figures that they did decrease the nitrogen load so, so it is also reasonable that their concentrations in these areas are lower so that's another ex explanation for, for the differences because of this experiment, we are, we are also sure that there is a difference in extraction method. So.